जय राधा माधवा कुंज विहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज विहारी जय गोपी जनवा गिरे पर जय गोपी जनवा गिरे पर सौरनंदन भजन हंजनायसनंदन भजन हंजनायसमून थेरा है भान झमून थेरा हान छियम थी हम भार कुंज बिहार हे जय राम भाधवान कुंज बिहा हे जय हे जय भूपी जनवल बम घेरे भर धारे आयो हे धैया गोपी जनवा गिरे भर धारे गिरे सूर नंदन भज जन हंजन नंदन भजा जन हंजना हे हे यशोर नंदन भजा जन हंजना जम्मू नियरा जामुन थी राम जामुन थी हे राम भाधवान कुंज बिहारे रीव हे धाय राधवान कुंज बिहारे जाय हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि हरे हरे राम हर हे राम 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 हरे हरे Krishna, Rivo, Bolo, Bolo, Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna, you. Hey, Ram, Ram, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Nithai Gaur Evil Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Krishna, Nitha Gaur, Hey, Ho, oh. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Nithai Gaur, Hare Rama, Hey Rama, Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Oh, hey. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari 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 Go to Hari 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Prabhu Pad Hey, Prabhu Pajai Jai Prabhu Gaur Pemanande Hari Hari Bol Sila Prabhu Pad Ki Dhai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is chapter 10 in the Bhagavad Gita, verse number 19, The Opulence of the Absolute. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha 
हत्ते खाता यश्यामी दिव्य यात्मा विभूता यहाँ प्रदान्यता कुरा श्रेष्ठा नास्यंतो विस्तराश्यमे श्री भगवान् वच्चा हंतते कथयिष्यामि दिव्ययात्मा विभूता यहाँ प्रादयंता कुरुशेष्टा नास्यंतो विस्तराश्यमे Shri Bhagavan Vacha Atta Te Kata Yashyami Divya Yatma Vibhuta Yaha Pradhanyata Guru Shrestha Nasyanto Dvistarashyame Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Tevishti Yishyami Ladies, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Hanta, yes, te, unto you, Katayishyami, I shall speak, Divya, divine, he, certainly, Atva Vibhutaya, Personal opulences, pradanyata, which are principal, kuru shrestha, O best of the kurus, na asti, there is not, anta, limit, vistarasya, to the extent, may, my. Translation, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, 
He's speaking to Arjun. Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, are Arjun, for my opulence is limitless. Mm -hmm. Please repeat. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations. but only of those which are prominent. O Arjuna, for my opulence is limitless. Purport. It is not possible to compre comprehend the greatness of Krishna and his opulences. The senses of the individual soul are limited and do not permit him to understand the totality of Krishna's affairs. Still, the devotees try to understand Krishna, but not on the principle that they will be able to understand Krishna fully at any specific time or in any state of life. Rather, the very topics of Krishna are so relishable that they appear to the devotee as nectar. Thus, the devotees enjoy them. In discussing Krishna's opulence and his divine energies, the pure devotees take transcendental pleasure. Therefore, they want to hear and discuss them. Krishna knows that the living entities do not understand the extent of his opulences. He therefore agrees to state only the principal manifestations of his different energies. The word pradanyata, principle, is very important because we can understand only a few of the principal details of the Supreme Lord, for his features are unlimited. It is not possible to understand them at all. And vibhuti, as used in this verse, refers to the opulence by which he controls the whole manifestation. In the Amara Kosha Dictionary, it is stated that vibhuti indicates an exceptional opulence. The impersonalists or pantheists cannot understand the exceptional opulence of the Supreme Lord, nor the manifestations of his divine energies. Both in the material world and in the spiritual world, his energies are distributed in every variety of manifestation. Now, Krishna is describing what can be directly perceived by the common man. And, th and thus, part of his variegated energy, energy is described in this way. Om Ajnan Timidandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudamani Pacharine Nirvishi Sharshunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Turu Vishya Gripa Sindhu Pe Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna explains in the in the uh, seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, in verse number twenty six. I'll actually read it. It's very important. Let's see here, twenty six. Vedaham samatitani vartamani nacharju jambavishyami chabutani mamtu vedana hakaschana. O Arjun, as the supreme personality of Godhead. I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. He doesn't say somebody knows, nobody knows. So the Lord, when we try to understand something that is beyond the principle of understanding, we can only become amazed, or maybe even confused. <laughs> either one to try to measure the supreme personality of Godhead is like trying to uh, you know empty the ocean by taking buckets of water out <laughs> it's not possible but uh, so when we say God is great mm, that doesn't really tell you much either 
He's unlimited. That doesn't tell you any much either. But we understand from principle that that which exists, manifested and unmanifested, both in the material and spiritual world, as Krishna says in this same chapter, it's coming from me. So what is it? Aham sarvasya prabhavo matat sarva prabhartante iti matam bhujante man buddha bhava saman bitaha. So everything created, that's the manifested material energy, and thus what it is manifested in the spiritual world, which is never under the principle of beginning and end, it's eternal, is all the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And yet he's beyond those energies also at the same time. We can't even understand what's in the going, going on in our own bodies. <laughs> and people like to somehow or other come up with ideas about what is God, what is God's like, what does he do, and they come up with so many ideas. And sometimes you meet people who say, well, yeah, I, know, I understand Krishna. <laughs> but anyone who says that means that they're really under some kind of drug, <laughs> maybe a very heavy drug, <laughs> because it's not possible to understand the Supreme Personality of God. And, even if we could understand one fraction of his energy, that would be an amazing feat. But God is so unlimited, and everything about him is unlimited. And the conditioned soul is also fraught with four defects. In perfect senses, has a tendency to be illusion, uh, makes mistakes, and has the cheating propensity. So those who are beyond those four defects were known as what we say pure devotees, devotees who are free from all material defects. But Krishna even says, Manu, ma, um, chu, what is it, Mam Chavavet, what is it, 7-3? This was those who tried to know, know him. Oh, what is that? 7-3. Huh? Manusanam sahasresu kaschid yatati siddhaya yatatam apisidhanam kaschid mam veti tatvataha. Yeah. Yeah. Out of many thousands of Hmong men, one may endeavor for perfection. And those who have achieved perfection, hardly one, hardly one who has achieved perfection, knows me in truth. And so, in so many places, Krishna gives his superior position that it's not by sensual experience, it's not by mental power, it's not by intellectual abilities, or even imagination, which can go beyond the intellect, you can imagine things, that you can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the concession is here, it's fun to try. <laughs> That's the point. And that's where we benefit, when we try to hear and glorify the Supreme Lord in his different opulences and his different activities. It becomes a purifying effect where we develop an attraction for the Lord, and that attraction awakens within us transcendental happiness. So it's not possible to understand the Lord, but let's try anyway. <laughs> But Krishna, in this particular verse, he's giving something in a more concessionary way. He said, Arjuna wants to know. He's asking about his opulences, his vibhutis, which is his opulences, or his his powers. His, uh, you can know, always also go to his shaktis, his different energies, all of these things. So in order to give, as Prabhupada says, the common man a little bit of understanding of the greatness of God, he talks about himself as the best within certain elements of creation. And that begins the next verse. So this is the, this is the uh, springboard verse, which leads to the rest of the chapter, where the Lord will now start to speak a little bit about himself in relationship to the power that exists within the material. And he's the best in all, all material categories. So when we think of different material categories and the power, the most powerful one within that category, Krishna aligns himself with that just to give us a small understanding of his greatness. But then again, after he, you'll see when you come to the end of the chapter, he says, but he says to Arjuna, what's the use of all this detailed knowledge? 
what a simple fraction of my energy I pervade and support the entire creation. So what I'm telling you is so insignificant. <laughs> but since you want to know something, I'll tell you. I'll give you a little idea. You could use your imagination a little bit to understand something about me. Um, sometimes we hear, and it's discussed like that, that Krishna is so great that he is, doesn't even know how great he is. <laughs> he can't even figure it out. <laughs> so what does he do? He becomes Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and in Lord Chaitanya, he, he, he develops the mood of his internal energy, Srimati Radharani, and in that mood, she knows more of his greatness than he does. <laughs> And therefore, he can extend, understand a little bit more about himself from her position. That's why he becomes Mahaprabhu. To understand what is his greatness and what is what about him that attracts her in such a powerful way. And what is the happiness she feels by that attraction. Mm -hmm. So that's the three, what we, they call internal reasons of why Mahaprabhu manifested himself. Or Krishna manifested himself as Sri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just to get a little indication of his own greatness. <laughs> now, sometimes there's a little story that, kind of a little antidote. Krishna's walking along, and he passes this big pillar, you know, like we have pillars here, but this has like glass on the outside, so it's reflecting images that pass. So he passes by, and he sees his own image, and he thinks, wow, who's that person? He's so beautiful. Oh, that's me. <laughs> He becomes he becomes stunned by his own uh, qualities that are there. They amaze Krishna himself how great he is. Don't try that yourself. I know we some people do that too. They look in the mirror and think how great they are. But <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Obviously, the answer is the one that's looking into the mirror. <laughs> But that doesn't really give us much of an indication. In fact, it increases the what is called the ahankara, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But Krishna, he's so great that it doesn't matter because he's at the same time, he knows that he's great because he knows his position. He's not a fool. He doesn't think, well, I'm God, but still, you know, I should be humble and don't think I'm God. No, <laughs> he knows he's God. <laughs> But he knows he's the greatest of all. But he doesn't become proud because of his greatest. He uses his greatness in order to do great things for all living entities. In other words, equipped with so much mercy, power, opulences, that he wants to, he uses them to benefit others. So when you see that, then you know what, what, what the greatness of God is. Uh, just like there's a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the sixth canto, I think it's 19th chapter, verse number five. What is the greatness of God out of all of his qualities? And then it, it goes down the list, and then finally it says his kindness. And how does that manifest? That he can do anything, but he allows what he wants to be done through his devotees. He empowers his the devotees to do the great things. He's giving the power. He's giving the intelligence. He's giving the facilities. And the devotee does something on his behalf, and the devotee gets the credit. That's Krishna's greatness. <laughs> Not only is he so great, but he doesn't take credit for his greatness. He likes to give greatness to his devotee. He appears into a dream of his devotee and tells the devotee, Build my temple. Build me a temple. And so he, he gives indications on how to do it. The devotee gets inspired by the dream and starts to work. A temple comes up. Everyone is so happy, glorifies that person, and that person gets the credit for building the temple. But it was Krishna behind the whole thing. And that's true on all level. And so really, his greatness comes in a very sweet form he likes to give credit to others, although he's doing everything. <laughs> pretty, pretty merciful personality, huh? <laughs> like that. Usually when we do something, we think, hmm, I hope they notice 
what I did, you know. If they don't know this, I'll remind them. <laughs> or I'll do it again just to make sure they get it the second time. <laughs> but that's not Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, he's, he's, he's so powerful, so great. Uh, one time Prabhupada was in London, and there was one society that was arranged to come to see him. It was called the Mensa Society. The Mensa Society is a very elite group of thinkers. Their whole principle in life is to think about philosophical topics and discuss them into deeper and deeper ways. Um, and so they came to meet Prabhupada on the request of Sham Sundar, who was arranging. And so they were talking, and Prabhupada was talking about the greatness of Krishna. And one of the participants from the society said, well, if Krishna is so great, can he, can he create a rock he can't lift? Now you think about the question. Can he create a rock he can't lift? So if you say yes, that means that uh, it restricts his lifting power. And if you say no, it restricts his creating power. So how do you answer it? So Prabhupada said, yes, he can create a rock he can't lift, and then he'll lift it. <laughs> so a, 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 a trick answer came by way of a trick question. So in other words, people try to figure out a little bit about the greatness of God, but they can never do it using words. So how can we understand the greatness of God? By how he manifests himself in the life of his devotee. That's his real greatness, how he enters into the life of a devotee and inspires the devotees to become fully Krishna conscious. That's his mercy. And you'll see here, of course, this is on a little slightly different explanation, to satisfy Arjuna and to give some indication of himself, as Prabhupada says, to the common man, he'll speak about certain greatness in things in this world. Because you'll see so many books, magazines, periodicals, various types of information come out about wonderful things in this world, right? <laughs> Somebody does something wonderful. There's a, um, there's a book called the Guinness Books of Records. I don't know if you've heard of that, Guinness Book of Records, where people have done some extraordinary or out of the ordinary activities and get some kind of credit for it, and then they get their name put in a particular book. I remember Jai Pataka Maharaj, he, he actually made it into the Guinness Book of Records for the second most frequent fire in the whole world. <laughs> Somebody else beat him. <laughs> he was the second most frequent flyer in the whole world. So they do all kinds of thing. They have, you know, you know, there's one, well, who is the, mo the, the fattest person in the whole world? There was one man, he was over a thousand pounds which he was only half a ton, one person. They had to make a special doorway in his house so he could get in and out, and he was so big he couldn't even get in and out. Trying to go to the bathroom, well, that was another thing. <laughs> the toilet they couldn't make big enough, so. <laughs> huh? Hey, yeah, people like that don't live long. <laughs> they don't live so long, but I don't know if he actually walked, but he was... I guess he could move somewhere, somehow, but he was, you know, a half a ton. So, you know, people get amazed by certain extraordinary things within this world, either, uh, what you might say, that are worth glorifying or worth being, uh, developing distaste for. You know, it's usually both sides. But Krishna, in order to somehow or other satisfy the common man to give a little indication of his greatness, he will speak. So this is interesting. You'll find very interesting statements made by the Lord, which are very helpful in understanding the greatness of the Lord and also the greatness <coughs> of the Lord's creation. Because the same things he's comparing himself with, he's the creator of at the same time. 
He's comparing himself with the greatness in creation at the same time he's the person who created it. <laughs> so it's um, when you find when you understand a little bit about Krishna consciousness, you realize that Krishna is everything. Inside, outside, above, beyond, and, and everywhere. There's, there's nothing outside of Krishna. And in one lecture, Srila Prabhupada wanted to make that point. And of course we know, we say that the, the absolute truth is simultaneously one with and different from itself. But Prabhupada emphasized the oneness in one lecture. He said, you are Krishna, I am Krishna, we're all Krishna, this is Krishna, that is Krishna, everything is Krishna. Sounds like pantheism, right? <laughs> that God is everything. And therefore, you, you can worship whatever. You can worship your, you know, your toothbrush because it's Krishna, you know. So, but that is not the, but Prabhupada wanted to make the point to understand that you can't divide the energy from the source in the same way you can't separate the sunshine from the sun itself. They're intimately and eternally connected in the same way Krishna is connected always with his energies, his vibhutis. And his shaktis, his energies, his bhutis, his qualities, his sarups, his different forms, all the manifestations of all aspects of the, the creation and the manifestations of the spiritual world, which never undergo change, but are always expansive, are all part of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in order to give us a little understanding of, we use a little parable to say that in the beginning there was God and there was nothing else. And he was feeling lonely, so he decided to create something from himself so he could relate to that in a loving exchange. So it says that he manifests himself as the jiva in order for loving exchanges. <laughs> because the nature of God is love, and therefore without having someone to exchange love with, there has to be two. Love means two, not one. You know, self-love is not love, it's something else. So in, God, in order God to facilitate his own desires for love, manifested the jiva. But the jiva is also eternal. So how could he manifest something that always exists? There you go. Try to figure that one out. <laughs> something that always exists, although it manifests itself at a particular time, it appears to be coming from that, but at the same time it was always existing anyway. <laughs> Everything is really clear, right? <laughs> No, because we can't, uh, it comes back to the principle of achintya. If just say someone could understand God, then they would be on the same level as God. And therefore, no one can understand God because no one, there's no second. God is one. Ekala Isha Krishna Asabrita. There is only one personality who is the supreme source of all. So how does this help us in our devotional service? When we treat everything, which is the energy of God, in a proper way. In other words, there is a group of, well, um, we can call them religious people, and they, they're known as the American Indians in the United States of America, the original Red Indians, where they saw everything of the earth as being sacred. So just to spit on the, on the earth was considered a great offense, and people would be punished for that mm -hmm. because the earth was sacred. So they would, where they would see all creation as being sacred the same as God. We make a distinction, but at the same time, to treat creation in a proper way is Krishna consciousness. In other words, one of the things devotees like to do is waste things. They're expert. We, we waste things more than non-devotees do. 
you know, we take a roll of, you know, like, you know, paper, you know, these thing, and we pull it out. We take about 20 sheets and we wipe something on the floor and throw it away, right? Or we get this aluminum foil and we put it on everything. We use it for 20 seconds and throw it into the garbage. We turn on the tap to brush our teeth and the water keeps running out and we're going, sh -sh -sh -sh, and the water's just coming like this. So the audience, therefore, as Prabhupada would say, you're wasting Krishna's energy. So you might think, well, that's material, you know, it's just, but no, it's actually the energy of the Lord and it's provided. So to see everything and use it properly and treat it properly is bhakti. That's bhakti itself. And that's, if you carry that principle over to everything you do, then you'll see that all living entities are by nature very dear to Krishna, and therefore everyone should be treated in the best possible way. Therefore, to abuse someone, to minimize someone, to offend someone, is in one sense an offense towards the Supreme Lord. <laughs> because Krishna sits within the heart of all living entity. So that's Krishna consciousness. To see everything as Krishna's energy to be treated in the best way. In other words, if you can't use it in devotional service, at least respect it for what it is. <laughs> but if you can use it in devotional service, then that energy becomes divine. <laughs> it's already divine, but it manifests itself in another form known as temporary. But the in, in, in the essential principle is that, that the ingredients that make up that form or whatever it is are eternal. Even the scientists know that, that matter cannot be created or destroyed. <laughs> but you can break matter down to its finer elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Just like if you put water on fire, it starts to boil, and then the water starts to evaporate. But what does it change? In? It changes into another form of itself, gas, and it goes into the ether. The molecular structure has changed, but the molecules remain in a different form. That's all. So everything, in all matter is eternal, like that. Although the, the forms that matter make up are temporary. So then to see like that is full Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and to treat things in that way is full Krishna consciousness. Then that's what we can gain by, and that's what Krishna is going to help us understand through this, to see these great things within the creation as being non-different than himself. <laughs> so this is a, this is a spring word, springboard verse where Krishna is preparing everyone for what he's about to speak. Mm -hmm. Simply fulfilling the desire of Arjuna, and why is Arjuna asking those questions? For us, so we can learn a little bit more of the greatness of Krishna through material energy, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Is there any questions or comments? Yes. Hare Krishna. From Avaduta Rai Prabhu. Krishna knows everything directly and indirectly. How can he enjoy if he all the time hears the prayers and complaints of unlimited souls? Please don't give me the inconceivable answer. <laughs> okay. He's asking a question in a marginal way. Okay. There's certain answers I should not give, okay. <laughs> and so the question again is... <laughs> Krishna knows everything directly and indirectly. How can he enjoy if he hears all these prayers and complaints? How can he enjoy if... If he hears all these prayers and complaints of the unlimited souls, how can he enjoy? He's it? hearing the complaints of the of the souls, and how can he enjoy that? 
He passes it on to Lord Vishnu who deals with it. <laughs> Vishnu has to deal with the manifestation. Krishna's in Vrindavan. He's just with the gopis. and He doesn't get involved with all that. He sends his expansion because Vishnu's in charge of maintenance. So then how does Vishnu deal with it? You know, well, I guess in different ways <laughs> depending on what you deserve to get. <laughs> so the gunas are actually giving the reactions of our activities. So we're getting simply the responses to our activities according to the quality of that activity. So. So, you know, the living entities are always on the on the level of human beings. What does it say? The living entities are always lamenting. The, the demigods and the higher planets, they're always jubilant. The humans on this planet are in lamentation. And those below, in the mode of ignorance, they're always suffering. <coughs> suffering or fearfulness in the lower modes. Lamentation on our level. We're always lamenting. Boy, I wish I got this. I didn't get this. I want this girl and I didn't get her. I want this guy. It's terrible. I got him. Now he's not what I thought he was, should be. And he's even more terrible. I wish I never wanted to have him in the first place. So everybody is just <laughs> lamenting about their situation. You know, I got this new pair of shoes that look so nice and they don't fit. My feet hurt. Now I have to go to the doctors. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, the material world. <laughs> well, this is the level of, of the humans. They're always never satisfied, always lamenting. This is not right. This is not right. This is not right. I want this. If you want to be happy, just be satisfied. Whatever you have. Realize it's coming from God and be thankful for it, be grateful for it, and use it. Don't worry about what you don't have or what you want to have or what you should have or what you could have. There's an old verse called, shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> I shoulda did this, I coulda did this, I woulda did this, but I didn't do it. So what happens? Shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, oh, things went wrong. And then you look back and think, boy, if I would have did it differently, it wouldn't have went wrong. Why didn't I do it differently? Oh. <laughs> it's done. You can't change it. <laughs> or let me go, let me try to get something in the future. If I get it, boy, it's going to bring me so much happiness. Well, if it doesn't bring me so much, it'll bring me more than I have now anyway. So let, I should get it anyway. <laughs> I should try for it, right? But for devotee, we know it's just chant Hare Krishna if you want to be happy. That's all. <laughs> if you chant Hare Krishna, you'll be happy. And you don't have to worry about what what's going to happen or what won't happen. It'll happen automatically by chanting Hare Krishna. That's the panacea for all problems is Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, any other questions or comments? Adi, nice, so nice to see you. Good you to just, see you, you're like the sun that entered into the darkness. Thank you. Uh, reflecting, <laughs> reflecting your light, Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, I uh, have an um, um, ongoing discussion with my, my friend, one of my friends. Uh, he says <clears throat> that he knows how much he pays for electricity at his home. He pays for the what? Electricity. Electricity, okay. And uh, he says he's paying for it. He's earning money, uh, good money, and he's paying for it. So he says if he is... Um, using it for Krishna, why should he uh, try to be economical with hot water or water in general? He says, 
Krishna has rivers that never are turned off. Mm -hmm. They keep running all the time. The the flowers send out millions of seeds. So he says Krishna's world is very abundant. And well, that's uh, just misuse. That's all. If you misuse something, or you, or you unuse it in a wrong way, then um, you're you don't understand that these energies belong to the earth, and these er the earth energies are actually coming from the Supreme Lord Himself. So we're not honoring them in the proper way. And we we'll see that if it continues, then there may, may also be shortages of these things. It could also come to that. People are complaining now about shortages of water. In some places, there is I mean, there is shortages of water. And so they also predict in so many years there will be no, not enough water for everyone. They'll have to go to the ocean and try to distill that ocean water and turn it in. But Krishna's made it in such a way you can't do it. <laughs> they tried to do it. It doesn't work. Uh, so, yeah. To treat things the way they're supposed to be treated, waste is a, a symptom of, of the lower modes of material nature, to waste things, or to be careless in using things. Mm -hmm. And they say if you always want to be in abundance, always use things in the right way, and you'll always get more. So the, that person's putting himself at risk, but at the same time he's not understanding this, that behind the energy is a person who's providing that. And so it should be... And then also we might think of it another way. There are people who are dying to have what you have in abundance. So why, should, why don't you share what you have to others who are needy instead of wasting it? Like that. That's another way to respond to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We throw a lot of food away, but then there's people who are, you know, just like when Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, the devotees were eating off leaf plates and then they were throwing the leaf plates in this pile. So the young kids, the really poor kids in Vrindavan, they were running to the piles. And the dogs were also going, and they were fighting between the dogs and the kids who could get the, the scraps. When Prabhupada saw that, he, he started to become overwhelmed with emotion. He was really, he was feeling really unhappy in his heart, and then he began the whole Food for Life program in Vrindavan based on that. He said, now we should, we should cook enough food for everyone and invite everyone to come and take prasadam to their satisfaction. And he did that. And that started the whole Food for Life Vrindavan program. Like that. So, yeah. Um, why waste? <laughs> just because you have a lot, and that's not, a, it's, it's just, it's, it's misuse, that's all. Tell him, well, he's got a lot of money. Does he Does he just kind of like um, take his money to start a fire with in the morning? No. <laughs> Ask him to do that. <laughs> you know, put it into your stove and, you know, start a fire with some of your, you know, $100 notes or something. <laughs> no, but he talks about electricity and water and like that. But why, you know, if he's got so much money, but he'll be very conservative when it comes to the money, right? <laughs> Yeah, he's quite generous. Oh, he's generous. Well, that, well that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> of course, c come come out behind the uh, the other person there. It looks like you are four-handed form Vishnu or something. <laughs> Four arms and two heads, you know. We're getting a little transcendental divine manifestation here. Okay. It's fallen because of the sun. I caught some sun too much. Oh, okay. 
Okay, uh, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> there is uh, <laughs> when uh, when you uh, organize some event with devotees, then usually uh, the greatest fear is that uh, the, uh, that uh, you are going to run out of uh, prasadam. <laughs> so, so at least in that uh, part of, of our activities, we we. Uh, we we gladly risk uh, some waste uh, and because uh, there is uh, much more harm if uh, there is not enough then if there are some leftovers uh, so uh, and my, a friend of mine, a lady, she organized some in event and I told her like really, uh, uh, I was really decisive because she was, uh, she was determined uh, not to waste anything. But I told her that's not the right mentality. You should risk the waste uh, because the worst thing that can happen is that we run out of uh, prasadam. Yeah. yeah, that was Prabhupada's same program. Prabhupada was like that. Cook enough, make sure there's enough for anything, there should be an abundance. And he said, if there's some leftovers, the devotees can eat it. <laughs> In other words, you can save it for another day. And I mean, I used to, we used to eat kitri like two to two or three days in the old days in Krishna consciousness. Cook kitri the second day is better than the first day. It's really, in the third day, wow, it's, it's super. <laughs> After that, it goes down, but... <laughs> so yeah, and what you could do is just like uh, connect with some local food agencies and then if you have some leftovers say that this is from our, uh, our love feast and we have some extra food, we don't want to throw it, can we offer it like that. There are some agencies that may take it and you just have to explore that. But it's better, you're right, it's better to cook more and, and take that risk than take the other risk of not having enough prasadam. That's the worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, everyone should have sufficient prasad. For devotees, prasadam is number one. <laughs> Sometimes it's even higher than that. <laughs> no, to go to a festival and have prasadam to serve down and there's nothing for you is like, my God, I'm going to go home and make a sandwich, you know. <laughs> it's terrible, <laughs> really. Uh, I agree with you, and this, you're you, you're right because Prabhupada has mentioned that also. Make sure there's enough for everyone. If there's extra, we can we can the devotees can take it or can distribute it. And what he did say was that we should cook every day in all our temples, invite guests to come, and serve them uh, puris, halva, one sabji, and uh, a chutney every day four items, everyone, anyone who comes to the temple should get these four items, cooked nicely, hot, right off the, you know, warm, and Prabhupada said at the end of the day, if there's anything left over, the devotees can take. <laughs> really, yeah. And I see Ananta's not paying attention to this one. <laughs> He's making sure he doesn't hear this one. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> but that's, a, yeah, there's a, there's a, 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 a discuss, discussion between uh, Ramashwar and Tamal Krishna Goswami. They're, they're talking about Prabhupada's plan for city temples is to cook and have invite people to come and just take prasad. He said, no one who comes to our temple for any reason should not should be denied prasad. Even the, the guy, the mailman who comes, 
you know, give him some prasadam. <laughs> Everyone, yeah. Prabhupada was big on distributing prasadam, very, very profusely, yeah. Well, he's he has to deal with the finances too. <laughs> He wants more. Oh, all right. So we got the left wing and the right wing. Okay. I'll talk to Ananda. <laughs> I do have a little influence. <laughs> Yeah, it's not fair. Everyone should get, I mean, devotees should eat as much as they want, too. It's not like, well, you had three plates, you can't have four. No, if you want four, you can have four. <laughs> really. Prashadam should be, Prabhupada said, everyone within 10 miles of our temple should never go hungry. <laughs> Really, ten miles. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's another concern. How to how to deal with vegans. We try to honor their preferences because they always ask, what's in it? <laughs> well, it's got clarified butter. I'm sorry, can't have it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can make a few preparations on a, on a feast that are vegan like that. To satisfy them, you know. We don't, in principle, we don't agree with the whole thing, but there are, it's a large movement now, and it has some, we should, we can respect that, but at the same time, we don't follow it. But in order to give them prashadam, we can also make things that are vegan, yeah. Yeah, you know, so divide, the, if you're cooking, divide the cooking up between vegan and non-vegan. At least there should be a few preps for the vegans. But how many vegans actually come to the temple and declare that they're vegan? <laughs> because they know, they don't, they don't usually come here because they know everything we use is in milk products, you know. Yeah, and by, by John Mastami 2022, next year, all temples have to have some program where they can supply only vegan milk products for all their offerings. Uh, my god sister, who is very, yeah, one minute. Well, my god sister now is right, just finished writing a book, and she asked me to contribute to it, and I did. She's writing on this idea of ahimsa milk. And uh, so uh, she's concerned because we can see that most temples don't know how to do it, can't figure out how to do it, and uh, people are still reluctant to do it. <laughs> so it's a, it's a problem. Because the meat industry and the milk industry are hand in hand in this in the material world. <laughs> so yeah, the meat in the you know, the people who keep cows, they keep cows their whole time until the cows can't give any more and then they sell it to the meat industries. So it's a problem. It's a real problem. 
So this, she's writing this book now, and so uh, it's just just came to my attention these last couple of weeks, and I have uh, contributed a little bit to the book, but it's interesting. And she's presenting the problems that go along with it, along with Prabhupada's statements in, in this regard. And Krishna Shetra Maharaj, he also put together one particular uh, book, and uh, I forgot the name of it, but maybe you remember. Huh? Ethics, and cow Ethic and cow protection? Something like that, yeah. So I have a copy. Yeah, so he's he's dealing with that same thing, which includes a lot of it. Yes, yes, Prabhu, you have a... It's not the same, no. Not at all. No, he just changed to a Himsa now. Yeah. Yeah, that's another concern. But it's a GBC resolution, and they want us, everyone, to... I believe in it. I fo I follow. I try to follow it as much as I can. I'm not following it perfectly, on a personal level. I get ghee, but I'm not sure if it's a hemsa ghee or not. So I use that kind of ghee. But for milk, I don't touch milk that's not a hemsa. And we have it here, and you can get milk, you can get some milk from Astasaki's farm here, and Divya Prabanda in Croatia, both have cows and are providing milk to the devotees. To make a, a program, working it with them can probably increase uh, to some level. But I spoke with Ananta about that, and it, there's a lot of things to work out. It's not so easy to bring this program into. But that's what we should do, have a farm where we can be provided with a Himsa, mil Himsa milk products and then use all of that for the deities and devotees. Mm -hmm. How to organize that, that's the, that's the uh, concern. It's not so easy. But it's important. <laughs> but vegan is completely different. They don't see, and vegan means no alternative. Our alternative is ahimsa, but their alternative is simply to, to rule out milk altogether. Mm -hmm. Or any kind of milk products. <laughs> But if you go to Ayurveda, Ayurveda really glorifies milk. It's a very and all the all the nutrition all the nutrients that you need is found in milk itself. There are sadhus, sages who in the in India who live simply on milk and that's all. <laughs> And to put it right down, it's the miracle food for babies and for old men. <laughs> if you're old and if you're a baby, it's good for you. It's actually essential. If you're in between, you can do without it, <laughs> at least to some degree. Mm -hmm. But Prabhupada makes the point, milk, uh, nourishes finer brain tissues which are necessary to understand spiritual matters. So, yeah. So that's a big topic. <laughs> big discussion on that. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. <laughs>